everyone, and welcome to the, uh, uh, this, uh, today's LEND webinar. Um, LEND, Leaders Engaged in New Democracies, uh, is an initiative by the Community of Democracies uh, that aims to share information about how democracies uh, work, how, de how we can make democracies work. And with me today, I have one of our honored LEND advisors, uh, Mr. Abdelbase Ben Hassan from Tunisia, who is uh, leading the Arab Institute for Human Rights based in Tunis. The institute also has offices in other countries such as Egypt and Morocco and uh, Lebanon, and two offices in Tunisia working with uh, human rights, uh, democracy, and uh, citizen education. Um, we're going to talk about Tunisia's transition to democracy. And um, uh, we have about half an hour. Uh, we encourage people to please um, make comments, uh, and we will uh, get back to your questions or comments um, uh, during the program. The first issue I would like to raise with you, Mr. Ben Hassan, is um, the uh, new constitution that was adopted um, recently, a couple of months ago, which uh, was um, a huge success for the Tunisian transition to democracy after uh, a couple of uh, years, actually more than three years of transition since it started in December 2010, um, uh, all uh, political forces in Tunisia agreed uh, to a constitution that tried to strike a balance between the different groups and their uh, ambitions and at the same time um, be um, um, a real, truly democratic trans uh, constitution respecting basic human rights. Um, what is your uh, appreciation? How how would you view the constitution that was adopted, Mr. Benazem, um, um, from your perspective, being a um, human rights and democracy uh, advocate, and um, also having played uh, a fairly substantial part of the the, um, uh, the discussions um, leading to to the new constitution? Um, are you satisfied? Uh, are there any problems you see with it? Did it strike the right balance between state and religion when it comes to gender issues? Uh, are there any outstanding issues uh, that might come back and haunt Tunisia later? Hello, uh, everyone, uh, and good evening. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam uh, Ambassador and uh, grateful for the community of uh, democracies for giving me this opportunity to uh, talk about the uh, Tunisia experience uh, in a democratic transition. An exciting, uh, difficult, uh, very complicated but promising uh, transition process. Uh, I think that the constitution, uh, the new constitution adopted in uh, the tw last 26th of uh, January 2004, I think uh, that it's a, a real uh, progress in the uh, protection uh, of uh, human rights and uh, liberties. Uh, it's different from the uh, last uh, constitution adopted after the independence in 1949. The uh, last, the uh, the uh, last uh, constitution uh, was declared the, and adopted uh, some human rights and uh, liberties, but it was not guaranteed by law, and uh, it was uh, and the dictatorship and despotism um, really, by practice, uh, just uh, violated all uh, these uh, civil political, economic, and social rights. I think that the new constitution is a real progress compared to the uh, first uh, constitution. Uh, the uh, new constitution um, uh, guaranteed um, some uh, human rights, civil and political rights, like the freedom of expression, the freedom of assembly, the freedom of thought, and of uh, um, uh, also of um, uh, of assembly, uh, the new constitution um, is uh, 
also um, declared the importance of uh, economic and social uh, rights. Uh, and um, most economic, social, cultural rights are guaranteed by the new constitution. Uh, and also, uh, the um, new constitution also is very clear about the um, uh, some very important uh, uh, um, concepts like uh, equality between men and uh, and women. In that sense, I think the constitution is a real progress. Uh, the uh, constitution also um, uh, is uh, also uh, has a new, uh, I think, uh, uh, human rights uh, developed compared to the last two one is uh, about the local participation and the rights of citizens to participate uh, on the uh, local uh, governance, and this is, I think, is a major progress in Tunisia and major progress for the uh, transition and the participation of people in transition. There are some institutions, important institutions, that are also um, guaranteed by this constitution, like, uh, for example, the Constitutional Court. This is new for Tunisia. Uh, the uh, High Commission for Human Rights uh, and also the um, National Commission for, uh, for Elections. I think that this a kind of uh, um, uh, major uh, advancement for the uh, for human rights, uh, and uh, and I think that uh, this uh, advancement should now um, be uh, developed by uh, developing a kind of real uh, human rights uh, uh, system. There are also some weaknesses in this uh, constitution, uh, mainly uh, some uh, confusion uh, around some rights like the right to life uh, and also uh, the right uh, uh, of, um, uh, of the, the, this kind of confusion between the right are the human rights and the rights of uh, uh, citizens and uh, uh, some confusion in in declaring some uh, some rights, but I think in general we are satisfied about this constitution, and uh, it's a major advancement for for Tunisia. Mm. Mr. Benesen, it's it sounds as if you would be ready to recommend uh, the Tunisian constitution, even though there are uh, certain things that uh, perhaps might be even better, but that you might be able to recommend it for for other countries in the Middle East uh, looking for um, uh, a good um, uh, model of a democratic constitution. Uh, adjusted to uh, a country with a majority of Muslims. Um, would, would, would you think that that is, um, um, it would be worth marketing the Tunisian constitution to other countries? Uh, I think it's a kind of, uh, uh, of message of hope, this constitution, because uh, you know that we are in a very uh, difficult moment in the Arab countries. Uh, in many in many Arab countries, there are conflicts and uh, some uh, uh, difficult uh, situations for the advancement of uh, of human rights. Uh, I think that this is a message of hope, uh, and uh, uh, the importance of this constitution is not only about its content and the rights guaranteed by this constitution, but it's about also the process itself, the process of elaboration of this constitution. And I think that this is the real um, experience that can really influence the, and I hope that it can uh, positively um, uh, impact the situation in other Arab uh, countries. Uh, this process was made of uh, uh, negotiations, uh, real social uh, debates, uh, major uh, compromises between different ideological and political uh, groups, uh, and also it was, uh, I think, um, uh, what was also important in this process was the real and the powerful participation of civil society organizations and mainly young uh, people and, and, and uh, women's organizations. Uh, the, uh, this process, I think, transformed 
the civil society organizations from a kind of uh, uh, organization reacting to human rights violations to uh, a kind of civil society uh, power trying to also uh, develop the, um, their capacity to suggest and also to develop, to develop real proposals uh, on uh, different human rights uh, issues. Uh, I think also that the, um, uh, the Constitution uh, was uh, also the result of uh, uh, the national debate between different political parties uh, ending uh, for the moment a very difficult uh, political crisis uh, and uh, the civil society organizations played a major role in facilitating and also um, uh, this this um, uh, this uh, big national uh, national debate. Yeah. Uh, now you're um, uh, into a different phase. After the constitution was adopted, uh, there was um, a technocrat government, a care, more or less, with a caretaker role uh, appointed, and uh, the political actors disappeared from the government in order to prepare for the elections. And they're coming up towards the end of the year now. Um, uh, this, uh, I understand, is a fairly uh, sensitive period for Tunisia because the economic and social problems did not go away um, and uh, there will not be um, a political government until after the elections. Uh, is there any risk that the democratic process will be derailed during this uh, process running up to the elections? What are the risks uh, uh, as you see it? Um, also considering that a technocrat government perhaps is not just so uh, well connected to the, uh, um, uh, to the citizen uh, that um, uh, a political government would be. Now, uh, do you have any message to Tunisian actors and to the international community um, in, in view of this um, quite sensitive process? Uh, I think that the uh, the process is uh, still sensitive and um, uh, also very um, uh, very challenging. And I think that that uh, the first uh, uh, message um, is the continuation of the same spirit of negotiation, uh, uh, discussions, and. Uh, also uh, compromise. I think that this is the uh, important words that we should retransform into kind of uh, an institution in Tunisia, the institution of negotiations and uh, and um, uh, social uh, social uh, debates. This is, I think, that the first thing is to create a kind of uh, uh, of hub or space for all political and social. Uh, actors to continue uh, negotiating and peacefully negotiating this third and difficult and uh, sensitive uh, moment for Tunisia. Second, I think that the government and all the political actors uh, and social actors should, I think, quickly move to uh, develop a kind of vision for the uh, n this new uh, transition um, uh, step and I'm it's a vision for uh, hope uh, for Tunisians uh, start to uh, go back to the marginalized issues like uh, um, uh, like uh, economy like reforming uh, the economic system uh, giving some hope for young people by trying to find quick solutions to some uh, aspects of unemployment, for example, uh, try to invest in people, in young uh, people, um, and also uh, start reforming institutions. You know that uh, really to uh, guarantee a kind of uh, uh, democratic um, elections, uh, we need uh, some, uh, uh, I think, strong, neutral uh, institutions. Uh, I'm uh, Meaning the uh, the security system, we should start by really addressing uh, the problems of this uh, the security system. Um, also, uh, reforming the media uh, sector. 
and the uh, and justice. And I think that for any uh, democratic elections, we need that these uh, three uh, major institutions uh, play a kind of uh, uh, monitoring and uh, um, monitoring um, uh, role. Uh, I think that uh, uh, reforming institutions, um, uh, addressing the economic uh, situation, uh, and uh, combating um, violence and terrorism, I think that these three issues uh, should be uh, transformed into kind of common uh, national issues. All people should um, uh, develop a common understanding of these issues, uh, a kind of political uh, agreement on the necessity to uh, to have a kind of common vision on, on, on this, uh, these issues and develop uh, common strategies. Uh, the, the constitutions and the political, uh, the, um, the solution to the uh, political crisis uh, went through uh, or was, uh, was, was possible because of this kind of uh, national dialogue. And I think that now we need to move to developing national dialogues on uh, other uh, economic uh, security and uh, reform issues. Mm. Uh, you keep coming back to the, the very important role of civil society and the national dialogue. Um, and looking back on uh, the uh, well, rather unique features of the Tunisian transition so far, um, and uh, the fact that it actually so far, uh, Touchwood, has been successful, even though it's not been easy. Um, uh, can you distill any factors why uh, the Tunisian transition until now, and hopefully uh, uh, can, will continue to be, a success story? Um, uh, does it have to do with the role, the very um, uh, engaged role that uh, the civil society has played? Um, uh, the pact that uh, was created uh, in order to support and perhaps push the political actors into a mode of dialogue, um, a pact that um, uh, joined both uh, uh, the private sector and the trade unions and civil society organizations. Uh, what role did that play? Are there any uh, other unique features that you would want to point out uh, as part of the uh, uh, recipe for success? that the Tunisian transition uh, so far has proved to be? I think that all these factors were very important in, uh, uh, in uh, I think, um, uh, developing a kind of uh, peaceful transition for the moment. And I hope that this peaceful uh, aspect will continue in the, last, in the, next, uh, uh, in the next years. Um, all these factors are important, but also I want really to point out something um, uh, that I consider that it's deeply rooted in the, uh, in the uh, Tunisian uh, society. It's about the civism of this society. Um, in our history and uh, in our culture, uh, I think that there are some uh, principles that are really um, uh, deeply rooted in, uh, in, in, in this society, like for example, it's, it's, uh, uh, this country was the first country to uh, elaborate a constitution uh, 3,000 years ago. It was also the uh, second or the third country to abolish slavery. Um, and also uh, we have a, a very, uh, uh, I think, strong uh, reformist uh, religious and cultural uh, school. Um, uh, I think also that the uh, civil society um, um, organizations um, played a major role. Played a major role, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, civil society uh, were founded. Uh, the, the first uh, civil society organization, the trade union UGTT, was founded in 1946, and uh, I think that this. Uh, gave Tunisia a kind of uh, specific uh, civic uh, uh, aspect. And, uh, and because of that, the slogans of the revolution were civic. It was about um, 
it was about dignity, it was about uh, equality, uh, freedom and, and, and justice and uh, uh, people uh, are now defending and trying to transform these slogans into, uh, into uh, reality. Uh, of course, this is the, um, the positive aspect of, uh, uh, of, of Tunisia, but you know that in the third, three last years we are facing uh, major challenges and, uh, and problems like uh, uh, um, uh, fanaticism, uh, um, uh, violent uh, political violence, uh, terrorism, uh, this is, uh, for me, I, I think that this is strange for the um, major uh, uh, part of Tunisians, but I think that this is a real, uh, real problem. We should be very uh, careful about uh, the reasons of uh, this new culture for us, the, the, uh, uh, this violent uh, culture, and uh, we should really um, uh, spend more uh, time and gather resources uh, to uh, invest in uh, education, uh, in culture, in, uh, in arts, because I think that uh, the uh, uh, civism of Tunisia was based mainly on education uh, culture, and I think that with education and culture, investing in education and culture, will help us, I think, to overcome these new uh, challenges. Uh, Mr. Bedesen, uh, you uh, stress very much the uh, cultural uh, aspects, uh, perhaps the software of democracy, the importance of uh, values and uh, uh, historic traditions in society as, as part of what has made the Tunisian transition uh, successful. And um, um, I know that um, uh, what, what you were saying about Tunisia's uh, um, very early constitution building exercise and uh, uh, also tracing back the different victories that Tunisia has had on your, your uh, road towards um, uh, the constitution based on respect for democracy and human rights. Uh, this, is, this is quite interesting to hear um, that there has indeed in Tunisia been uh, a history of thousands of years where these important steps have been taken one after one. And this seems to contradict the uh, uh, general um, uh, opinion that uh, democracy and human rights uh, somehow would be something belonging to one particular part of the world and be pressed from other countries from the outside. Now, uh, when you speak about Tunisia's roots in the, the, the uh, millennia-old fight for, for human rights, you give a different picture. Could you expand a little bit on that? Uh, I, I think that the uh, transition in Tunisia uh, for the moment uh, was peaceful and uh, uh, successful uh, at certain degree, because I think that we uh, we need to be very um, uh, very careful about the uh, the actual and uh, future challenges for this uh, new uh, new uh, transition. Um, I think that the uh, what is specific to the uh, uh, transition in Tunisia is that. The civil society organization played a major role, but they were not alone in playing this role. I think that also some political parties, the uh, businessmen and businesswomen, uh, and uh, many uh, uh, social uh, categories uh, took part to this uh, transition by uh, promoting um, uh, the necessity to uh, to make this uh, this transition a success, and I think that um, this kind of social agreement uh, around uh, or broad social agreement around the necessity to make this transition a success, success to combat violence, uh, try in very difficult moment to uh, develop a kind of common understanding on what we mean by peaceful transition. I think that this is um, coming from this kind of uh, uh, deeply rooted uh, civic, uh, uh, civic uh, culture. 
And, and because of that, when we uh, um, uh, developed the uh, Tunisia Pact on human rights and, uh, and liberties, and this was a major tool in, uh, uh, in uh, promoting uh, this uh, uh, human rights in the, democrat in the uh, transition process, we tried to uh, kind to change a little bit the relationship between specificity and, and universality and uh, try to uh, overcome kind of this kind of very conflictual relationship uh, between uh, uh, universality and specificity, saying that it's from our specificity that uh, universality, human rights, universality, the democratic principles of human rights were built. We think that from this kind of tolerant, uh, enlightened, and uh, human um, uh, principles, deeply rooted in our culture, we've been part of uh, this kind of big adventure, the adventure of developing universality. And I think that we need really, through culture, through education, through communication, and through also our work with our regional and international partners, we need really to develop a new approach to democracy and human rights try really to uh, develop the idea that uh, we have in our uh, history um, moments of freedom uh, and that because uh, of these moments now we should enlarge our part or develop our participation in this uh, universal adventure, the adventure of human rights and democracy. Mm. Uh you stress very much, you keep coming back to the importance of education for a democracy. And uh, your organization does a lot of that, I know that. Uh, you've been very, very engaged and I assume that you will continue to be, uh, particularly um, uh, with the elections coming up. Now, how is it possible, uh, can you share with us uh, your opinion, how is it possible to work with democracy education in a country like uh, Tunisia where uh, there is a problem, uh, perhaps, of not everyone being fully educated, um, having uh, access to a basic education, and also uh, perhaps not having much experiences from living in a democratic country, um, for at least for a number of decades. How, how do you cope with, uh, with those uh, issues when you uh, develop your, your programs? I think that the, uh, the revolution in Tunisia and the Arab, other Arab countries was not a challenge only through to the uh, political actors or to the uh, to the diff or to the economic and uh, um, uh, uh, powers, but it was a kind of also challenge to the human rights uh, people. Um, uh, it was about a major question: uh, human rights was uh, or the um, uh, dictatorship and. Uh, authoritarian uh, regimes were possible because of the marginalization of human rights. And uh, uh, our challenge was how to make human rights part of the uh, of transition, how to make uh, human rights part of the different dynamics of democratic transformation, uh, how not to marginalize human rights uh, again. And this is, was the main challenge for our institution and for different human rights actors. And the idea was to put human rights at the heart of changes, to make also human rights a kind of tool of a change. And because of that, we, we've been working not only on organizing activities, but on developing our, uh, our um, uh, discourse, the human rights discourse. How to make the human rights discourse first uh, a tool to, um, uh, to propose um, uh, reform uh, of institutions, um, reform of legislations, uh, how to make human rights part of the, uh, of the constitution uh, uh, process, uh, how to make human rights part of the, uh, of the, um, uh, of the development of uh, a new uh, social, uh, debates on uh, uh, on uh, economic social um, policies, uh, how to make human rights uh, part of the education system system transformation. This was uh, the major 
um, uh, challenges to our uh, our work. And now, uh, in uh, in partnership with uh, different civil societies uh, organizations, with ministries like the Ministry of uh, Social Affairs, the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Inter Interior, uh, of Culture, and uh, also working in. Uh, poor neighborhoods and in rural areas, we are trying to uh, develop uh, this new approach, uh, human rights as a tool of work to make uh, uh, people's life uh, people's life better. Uh, I think that we need to transform human rights education and education on uh, on democracy to transform uh, uh, this tool. Uh, to invest in this uh, uh, in this tool and to transform it into uh, a major uh, national uh, strategy. This is what we are trying to develop now. Thank you very much, Mr. Benes. And I should mention that this uh, question, the last one, was uh, actually coming in from one of our viewers. Um, uh, we have used up our time now. Uh, I would like to thank you very, very much. Uh, it has been highly interesting, Mr. Benison, and uh, uh, I believe that I, uh, I speak for many of us that we will be watching Tunisia with interest uh, during the next steps. And uh, uh, of course, the uh, the democratic international community is going to uh, try to do what we can in order to support uh, all Tunisian actors to, uh, uh, who who. Uh, are creating and engaged in creating um, a democracy in Tunisia. Thank you, uh, everyone out there who's been watching uh, or who will tune in in the future and watch this on YouTube. Uh, and uh, thank you for your questions. Uh, join us the next month for another equally interesting uh, discussion as we examine how to build democracy. And, uh, and again, uh, Mr. Abdelbase Benassen. Uh, uh, it was great talking to you and uh, looking forward to be able to uh, work with you continuously. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.